In the evening, Grabbiner comes to my door. Are you prepared? Yes, sir. Very well. Don't move. Are we going to find out what we are? Are we going to meet Mom and Dad? He twists his hand and the world twists around us. Oh, I remember this screen. Moments later, we are standing in the open in a chilly Vermont forest staring up at the stars. Here. Send your signal. He hands me a small cylindrical beacon box carved from my native wood. I rotate the lid to the correct setting and allow my own magic to infuse it. A whisper of energy curls outward, tying itself into a spiral and then vanishes through the veil. Grabiner could, of course, escort me into the other world himself, but he won't. He despises anything to do with spirit magic. Only the pressure of my parents has brought him this far. I should be grateful that he's waiting here with me. A flurry of fireflies form out of nowhere. Other where. Should you decide not to return for the spring semester, I would appreciate being notified in advance. I'll see you next year. I hold up the beacon and the spirit stream into it. Then I activate the sigil and step. Ooh! Oh, it's so cool! We get to see home! This is lovely. Elsewhere. Here at an established waypoint, the landscape is not so different from the forest that I left behind, except that the air is warmer. More spring than winter. Distances in the other world are not straightforward. Wandering with no destination in mind could quickly lead you to a forest of bones. But I have a guide. Spirits flow and a path opens up before me. I'm going home. Ooh. Winter holiday. Aw, oh, we don't get to see mom and dad. Time just passes. At least we got to see a little bit of the other world. It's beautiful. And just like that, we're home. Well, thanks, Mom and Dad. It was fun. I returned to my own little room at Iris Academy. It seemed smaller than I remembered it. Certainly smaller than what I have at home. Still, it is my room, my adventure, that I've chosen to pursue. And there are people here that I care about. From the noise outside, I can guess that my hallmates must be back as well. I head out of my room. Luke and Logan are nearby. Logan is holding a stack of wide, colorful boxes. Hey, what's that? Christmas presents! We arranged to bring some board games to school, since video games would not be allowed. Feel free to borrow one if you need some entertainment. Also, he's got this great idea about making money. Not making money myself, but providing an opportunity for others, if they're willing to risk a little. You mean gambling? Ah, <laughs> uh, my inner schemer. More or less. Come on, let's go show Donald! I'm planning to hold a gathering on Wednesday, if you're interested. Don't worry, I'll remind him! Well, they both seem to be in good spirits. <laughs> ah, the gambling again. So, let's read... My goodness. Such winter vacation. Um... Okay, did we... Yes. I think we read that. We did that. Um... Did we do this? Maybe we didn't. Let's, let's just start from here. The gift of thought. Instead of buying gifts to exchange, Professor Potsdam arranged for us to create cards to represent our good wishes. I made one for Barbara. Card exchange. I gave my bold adventure card to Barbara. I'm not sure if she liked it. Then Luke gave me a card. It was a little bit messy, but he remembered I liked hockey. Nice. Report cards. Luke worried about how the school assigns grades. Donald explained that it's mostly a, a record of personal achievements rather than a score. The other world. For the benefit of Wild Seed students, Professor Possum explained that any underage witch or wizard entering the other world 
would most likely have air soul devoured almost immediately. Any ordinary human witch or wizard, that is. For some, the rules are different. Chorale concert? Tonight I went to the Iris Academy holiday concert. Season's farewell. Professor Potsdam held an assembly and cast a spell to enhance the bonds of friendship between students. I thought about my connection with William. And so, I have this in my thing, even though I apparently didn't do anything with my winter vacation. Awesome. Back to school games. Luke and Logan return from their holiday with a stack of board games. Logan has some sort of gaming club in mind where students will be able to win money. Okay, and do I have anything new in here? Nope. All right. Back to school indeed. Now that school is starting again, what classes should I take this week? Um, we're all done on blue. Let's start doing... Red, green, black, white, and gym. And then we'll study on the weekend. Yeah. That ought to do quite nicely. Woohoo! I'm learning something. We have already discussed the use of force to, re to move air and cause a breeze. The next step is directing force to push a solid object. Pushing is a blunt and diffuse force. You might apply pressure to a door, but a push spell cannot turn a handle to open it. You might use the spell to knock an item off a shelf that is too high for you to reach with your hands. And if you are standing under that shelf, you might knock the object directly onto your own head. Always consider the consequences of force. If you push a box ahead of you into a river, what would you expect to happen? The box would get wet, and then be swept away by the current. You might also push a dangerous creature away from you if it cannot brace itself. But after that push, how will it react? Consider that before you attempt to push around something larger and more powerful than yourself. I mean, it's good advice. Shove a target one square in the direction chosen by the caster. Okay. Damien? Franco. Ah, I guess correctly. I turn to see a familiar face. Damien, hi. Hey there. Did everything go well for you over Christmas? Uh, yeah, pretty good. And with William. Well, I'm hoping. <laughs> Look at the two of us smirking at each other. <laughs> it's too much smirk energy. Oh my goodness. I think I've got confirmation that he's at least fond of me, but I haven't caught up with him yet this year. I'm sure he'll come around soon. How about you? You and Ellen still together? Oh, we're not officially together. Not yet. I'm taking it slow. Sure. I'll let you know if anything useful comes up. Good luck with your plans. You too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm in love with the fact that we're <laughs> schemy buddies. <laughs> what? what have I done? Ahem. <clears throat> Ahem. <clears throat> What's that phrase? Love is a battlefield. <laughs> uh, especially for schemers. Schemers and dreamers. Ah. Your life force, your energy, is always within you and always surrounding you. You are a unique spark, and wherever you go, you leave tiny traces of that energy in the world that you have touched. By expanding your aura to search for those little traces of living essence, you can feel the footsteps of those who came before you. Now, each of you stand up. Go and stand in the back of the room. Stretch out. Mingle a bit. After she's had us out of our chairs for a bit, she sends us back to our seats. But not the same seats we were sitting in before. Sense the life of the chair. The tiny traces your classmates have left behind. Oh! Oh dear! 
I should have said. Don't sit down. The spell will only detect the last living creature to be in an area. If you cast it in a cave after you've explored every nook and cranny, you may only detect yourself. <laughs> Thanks, Potsdam. Allows the caster to track the most recent creature to pass through an area. Which is really good if you want to follow Potsdam's uh, footprints through a dungeon. <laughs> Very handy. Someone knocks on my door. Hi. Thank you for coming around. Hey. Thought I'd better check up on you. Make sure you made it back from the wilds of Europe. I can't help it, I snort. <laughs> he just grins. Did you really think I might not come back? Not really, but remember, you're the only exchange student we've ever had. You're one of a kind. So you might have decided you'd had enough of us. Not just yet. How was your Christmas vacation? Oh, pretty good. We all went out to see the new King of the Rings movie as a family, and V and Donald even managed not to fight. King of the Rings, eh? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> you like those movies. Dramas and comedies set in the low world teach me things about the world outside I haven't seen. Horror and sci-fi create temporary nightmares. But fantasy, written by people who don't know any better, is often confusing or sad. Oh, they're alright, but it was the biggest release of the season. Everyone was going. Donald and Virginia haven't been out of school that long, and their friends back home wanted to chat about it. I was more interested in this film about a guy who passes himself off as a pilot and a doctor and all sorts of things. A grifter who doesn't even need white magic. What's a grifter? Oh. Uh. Well, in English, it means someone who makes money through small-scale tricks and lies. A con artist. They prey on people who are stupid or naive, usually. They have to be quick enough to outsmart their targets. But for wizards? There are some people who choose to live in the non-magical world, but don't want to follow its rules. They take whatever they want, whenever they want, wherever they want, and they fiddle people's minds to cover their tracks. Your council allows that. Well, they're not exactly exposing the magical world, are they? American wizards promote the principles of individual freedom. We try to restrict adults as little as possible. So if they're not killing anyone or putting the rest of us at risk, there is no room for enforcement. But it's tacky. It's in poor taste. People without magic have no defenses. So, calling a wizard a grifter? It's not a friendly word. What happens in your country if someone takes advantage of the non-magical? I don't really know. I simply wouldn't have expected a wizard to stoop so low. But of course, if it's so easy, someone must. Would I choose to punish a magical swindler if he were brought before me? What penalty would I impose? Uh, anything else interesting happen on your holiday? V filled her suitcase with candy and cookies to bring back. I may have to ward her room against ants. How about you? How was your trip? It was good. My parents set up a little tree with American ornaments for me, and we watched the fireworks. Nice to be home? Yes. A little strange, too. I've never been away from them for so long. It felt weird at first seeing them again. Yeah, that happens to everyone. It gets easier, though. And then, soon enough, we'll be out on our own. Hmm. Anyway, I wanted to check in with you, make sure you'd made it back, and that you were ready to get back to work. Dungeons may be a little more dangerous and complicated in the second semester. But I'm sure you can handle it. I'm ready. Okay. I'll see you around. What do you mean more dangerous? That was a scary beastie last time, William. He waves and departs. I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> At least we had like a fairly decent conversation. <laughs> it's been a long time. Now, my little 
subtle scribes, you should recall that I told you black magic is the magic of solidity and permanence. Life and spirit are chaotic and ever-changing by their nature. Force and illusion might come and go in an instant. Nothing truly lasts forever. Even our world and its magic will someday weather to dust. But that day is not today! And with black magic, we affect things that will last a good long time. Within an object, you can leave an enduring mark upon the world. A message for the future. You may also find it useful to mark your way through a labyrinth. If you can trust the walls not to move. Inscription. Write or remove words from a target object. Alright. I'm relaxing in my room when someone knocks on my door. Hey, Franco! Luke? I step out into the hall. You ready for bingo? Bingo? The game! It's five bucks to enter. Ah, this is the games for money idea that Logan had. I've never played bingo, so I don't know what will happen. I might learn something, but only if I'm willing to lose money. It all comes down to a gamble. <sighs> I mean, I could get some more money. I want to make sure I have money for... Valentine's cards later, though. Can't remember how much those are. I wonder when I start collecting money again for my allowance. Ah, uh, I won't. I'll save that for your route, Luke. Maybe. I'd rather not. Gambling isn't really approved of where I come from. It's not really gambling. He pauses for a moment, thinking about it. I mean, like, I guess it is, but it's not the bad kind of gambling? He shrugs. Okay, I'll see you later. He leaves, presumably to find a better target. <laughs> Sorry, Luke. I will play sometime, but I don't have a lot of money. Bonjour, mes chéris! Today I want to talk a bit more about other world creatures in general. Because our worlds are connected, they can cross over just as easily as we can if they have the power. Even those without magic sometimes catch a glimpse of strange creatures in the woods, visitors from other realms. But in this world, they are not native, and that makes them vulnerable. They are weakened and bound by their very natures, just as we are when we travel the other world. Every spirit in this world must follow certain rules in order to maintain their existence. Not the same set of rules for all spirits, though. That would be too simple. Arcane obligations vary depending on the type of creature and the method it used to reach our world. A witch casting the spell to summon a creature has the opportunity to affect those rules herself. And that is why one should never accept the invitations of spirits into the other world. If they open the gate, then they set the rules, and it's probably a trap. If you understand the rules that a creature is bound to, you can easily defeat it. Most of you will have heard of vampires being repelled by crosses. That won't be true for all vampires, but for some it is an easy weakness to make use of. In later years, you will study many types of other world creatures to learn this sort of lore. Now, to continue with your lessons in white magic. And now she has to teach us the spell. <laughs> now, my little fireflies, lay your pens down and listen quietly. With magic, and with white magic in particular, your eyes will be open to all manner of secrets. But just because you can peek beneath the veils does not mean that you should. By opening your spirit, you can sense the emotions of those around you, their fears, their needs, their honesty, and their threat. It can be a useful way to find out whether an unknown entity is dangerous to you, or to demonstrate to one that you are not. But it would be dreadfully rude to expose someone's delicate tendrils. Tend what? So, if while we are practicing, I discover that one of you has a little crush on me, I won't tell. 
Ooh. Think about that before you try to spy on your friends. They are very likely to notice. Empathy. Gotcha. All right, so strong. Nice, nice, nice. Footsteps in the hall signal the usual Saturday morning distributions, but nothing for me. What should I do today? Uh, we will study. Minnie Cochran is assisting students in the school library, but she seems a little distracted. She's got boy troubles. Minnie tries to help me with my black magic, but she keeps losing her train of thought. She still helped me. I think my stress actually went up less than it usually does. Man, poetry club again? It's been ages. This evening is the first meeting of the Midnight Poets for the new semester. In contrast to the chill outside, tonight's theme is summer, and members are quoting verses that remind them of sunlight and relaxation. Someone has managed to bring in a jug of lemonade and little paper cups for us to share, with admonitions not to leave any litter inside the greenhouse. Corinna stands to recite her verse. How beautiful is the rain, after the dust and heat, in the broad and fiery street, in the narrow lane, how beautiful is the rain. Who's this guy? <laughs> I even better if it storms. Ry Lewis, a junior from Toad Hall, leaps to his feet. He brandishes a wand tipped with gold, a gold lightning bolt, from which a long plastic cord loops out behind him and disappears under his cape like a tail. It can't be an electrical cord. Perhaps he drops his wand a lot, and so he's attached it to himself to keep from losing it. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I wanted to get a look at his uh, wand. All right. I think he's got a red charm as well. Without waiting for a cue, he begins to speak. The wind begun to rock the grass with threatening tunes and lo, he flung a menace at the earth, a menace at the sky. He speaks with dramatic excitement, gesticulating as if to call down the storms upon us. The wagons quickened on the streets, the thunder hurried slow, the lightning showed a yellow beak and then a livid claw. Yes, that's very nice. Something calmer next, perhaps? Rai sits down, still grinning, and a spark sizzles off the end of his wand. Tyrannus takes his turn, though he mumbles his way through his lines. In winter I get up at night and dress by yellow candlelight. In summer, quite the other way, I have to go to bed by day. It's a cute verse, though he doesn't much appreciate the smiles he receives. When my turn comes, I recite an old Greek poem about the cicada, whose buzzing voice is loved by the muses. The sound of the cicada always puts me in mind of summer nights. Several of the later speakers focus on poems about water or swimming, a favorite pastime of many. Surrounded by the protected greenery, we can almost forget that it's winter outside. But what did William talk about? William, I wanted to hear your poem. Alright, fine. Let's read about things. Uh, Damien checks in. Damien and I exchanged greetings and talked a little about our respective romantic schemes. <laughs> Uh, at least you both- at least you acknowledge it's a romantic scheme. <laughs> William's welcome. William stopped by and we talked a little bit- a little about our respective holidays. His family went out to a big fantasy movie. He would have preferred to watch a movie about a con artist and a battle of wits. He finds the idea of using magic to swindle people distasteful. No bingo. Luke invited me to Logo's- Logan's bingo gambling, but I choose not to take part. Otherworld creatures. Professor Postum gave a brief introduction to the concept of extraplanar vulnerability. How another world native is weakened when present in our world, 
just as an ordinary witch or wizard or human is weakened when visiting the other world. The risks are higher when someone else controls the gate. And Midnight Poetry. There was a meeting of the Midnight Poets tonight focusing on poems about summer. Oh, actually. Do I have anything about Rye What's-His-Face? Really? Nothing about Rye. Just a crazy guy. Ah, Grifter. A witch or wizard who lives in the low world by charming goods and services away from the mundanes by use of magic. This behavior is frowned on, but not officially punished as long as they cover their tracks so as not to expose the magical world. And there you have it. What should I do this week? Um, let's do... Strength, red, green, black, white. How's my... Okay, yeah, we're good. We're doing good. Nice. Um... Who? <laughs> Is, is this Kyo? This can't be Kyo. I don't remember Kyo being this edgy. Is this Kyo? I notice a guy hanging around the gym. He's not actively exercising or practicing any sport that I can see. He's pacing back and forth along the edge of the gym wall, kicking at any stray ball he finds near his path. Well, whatever's bothering him is none of my business. Guys, was that Kyo? There's something kyo -y about his face. Oh, that's gonna be weird. Alright. In the afternoon, I catch sight of some distinctively inhuman silhouettes in the distance. Oh my, what a pose, Pastel. It's Damien. And Pastel. Her delicate wings quiver in an unseen breeze as she displays herself for his attention. Her hand reaches out to touch his chest. He catches her hand in mid-motion and pushes it away. I can't hear what they're saying to each other, but I know a rejection when I see one. <laughs> Bad luck. Probably. <laughs> From a certain point of view, perhaps. Pastel hasn't made a move on us yet. I'm highly offended that she hasn't tried. We're so eligible. Oh well, I'm sure she'll get around to us one day. She is romanceable. We'll get to her. This week's just flying by. Footsteps in the hall signal the usual Saturday morning distributions, but nothing for me. What should I do today? Study. Minnie Cochran is assisting students in the school library. She seems to be doing better today. Minnie and I discuss the principles of white magic. I wish we would go back to being distracted. I wouldn't be so stressed out. <laughs> Noon. People come and go in the cafeteria all the time. Most students slide around each other en route to their destinations, barely even noticing the faces that they pass. But sometimes, a path going out intersects with a path going in. They both pause for a moment looking at each other. Then, with a little sigh, Minnie steps to the side out of Barbara's way. She walks on, saying nothing. A better outcome than the last time I saw them in the cafeteria together. But still not friendly. A truce, at best. I'm probably making it sound too dramatic. It's a school cafeteria, not a war zone after all. We'll figure out what's going on with them at some point. But today- that is not this day. <laughs> Sulking. A sophomore from Wolf Hall was hanging around in the gym looking upset, but I left him alone. Possibly Keo? Damien and Pastel. 
Pastel made a pass at Damien today, but he rejected her, which took her by surprise. And truce. Minnie and Barbara encountered each other in the cafeteria today, but left each other alone. And we'll figure that out another day.